I've recently been thinking about how some of us who do our own retouching and editing sometimes take things a little too far, you know, to the point where our improvements to a portrait might look a little unnatural, which is okay if that's what you're going for. It's all a matter of taste. But for me personally, I like to back off of my retouching or dial things down before I'm happy with the results. In other words, I don't really want to call attention to the retouching. Now, every portrait is going to have something you can correct or remove or enhance. I'm just going to jump right over here to the healing brush tool so I can remove a few stray hairs and bumps and things like that. All right, so let's start with these areas as a little demonstration of how I do this. I'll use the bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of the brush and then I'll just start clicking and dragging over little stray hairs like this. This tool works kind of like magic and actually Lightroom has a similar tool that does the same thing. All right, so we'll just knock out a few of these and you can see how natural the result is. And while we're at it, we can just mouse over little bumps and spots and click to remove them. And all of this is really easy to do, um, if not a little tedious. I mean, if you're like me, there's lots of repetitive action like this, uh, and it can get a little boring after a few minutes. I actually attempted to clear up the skin by just applying the neural filter for skin smoothing, which I suppose uses some form of AI or at least a smart algorithm for knowing how to fix skin. But... While it did do a, uh, a pretty good job of improving the skin on its own, it worked even better when I did this detailed retouching before applying the neural filter. And that's because the filter didn't quite remove all of the blemishes or strays. Now, there are lots uh, more sophisticated ways to improve the look of skin, and we hardly needed to do anything for Sophia's skin here. But in cases where there's a lot of real work to be done, you'll probably have to rely on much more advanced techniques or hire a retouching pro to get the results that you want. Okay, the skin looks really good, but just for the sake of this demo, let's enhance with the neural filter to see what that does. Now, the filter can throw a pretty noticeable glow on the skin, so I'm going to uh, just bring the blur down to zero and increase the smoothing to 36 and see if that looks okay. I want to make sure it looks natural because I don't like uh, to go over the top with this kind of thing. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now I've got the filter version on its own layer so that we can click its visibility on and off to see the before and after. Okay, next we're going to add a little brightness to the eyes and we can do that by just adding a curves layer and we'll just zoom in so that we can be a little more precise. And we'll fill the mask with black. We'll grab a brush. And you know there are several ways that you can do the next steps, but I'm gonna just paint in the entire eye area with white over the mask, uh, meaning I'm erasing these parts of the mask so that the adjustment I make later will come through on the non-black areas. Now, I know we're not getting any visual feedback right now on where I'm painting the white, but we'll see the effect when I make the adjustments. Okay, so using the Curves tool, I'm lightening up the unmasked areas, the eyes. And next, I'll duplicate this adjustment layer and its mask. So this adjustment is additive, and the eyes are getting much lighter now. And I'm going to tone down the whites by masking just the whites back in so the only thing affected by this adjustment layer will be the non-white areas of the eyes, and that's the pupil and the iris. Now you can see further lightening this up really brings those eyes up. There are a couple of spots here uh, that we're going to clear up as we go, but right now I'm going to selectively add the mask back in to darken parts of the eyes so that what I'm really getting is a natural looking brighter area in the lower part of the iris. And this just kind of adds a little life to the eyes, almost like there's a source of light near the ground in the scene. Okay, I know it's not perfect, but I want to show you basically the effect you're getting with a technique like this. And we can make this easy by just putting these eye enhancing adjustment layers into a group so that we can toggle them on and off and adjust our overall effect with an opacity adjustment as a group. So I'll toggle the group off so you can see the original look of the eyes and toggle the effect back on 
and bring the effect down a little to make sure we're not going too far with it. I'm adjusting it to 70% opacity. If we toggle it on and off again, you can see the effect at that setting. So in our exported demo images, I've got the original without the eye enhancements. Then this is the effect at 100%. And this is the effect at 70%, which is my preference in this case. And again, comparing the original to my choice of 70% of the effect. There really are so many different ways and better ways to improve skin texture and the look of the eyes, but I wanted to cover these really easy techniques that I use sometimes when I have the time and patience to do it. I'd like to know if you have any favorite retouching techniques or challenges when it comes to editing. Leave a comment down below if you do. See you next time.